Would you like to learn about self-mastery, on how to value your directed efforts, about electricity and magnetism, and how you can use that for your benefit and the power to do and to dare? Well, the author Uriel Buchanan, in his book titled The Mind's Attainment, A Study of Laws and Methods for Obtaining Individual Happiness, Success, and Power Through the Silent Force of Thought, here in Chapter 5, titled Self-Mastery, is inviting to do just that. My name is Daisy. Welcome to my channel. If you're new to this channel, welcome, welcome. So glad you found us. And if you found us just at this video and would like to catch up with the previous chapters, please go to my book playlist and access them there. Otherwise, to our community here, thank you so much for your support, for sharing this channel, for subscribing, and for coming in and leaving me your comments. It really lifts me up. Thank you so much. So without further delay, let's move on to Chapter 5, Self Mastery. The condition of the body and the quality of the nerve force determine to a great degree the strength of the mind. The action between the brain and the body is a reciprocal interchange. The brain is nourished by the nervous and magnetic fluids, which are the energies that feed the flame of the mind. Desire is an attribute of life-seeking expression in the world of form. The mind appropriates the forces according to the nature and intensity of the desire. According to the quality of the desire will be the attainment. We surround ourselves by associations kindred to our yearnings. Your present environment, to a very great degree, is the result of the forces you have set in action by your past desires. It is desire which awakens the power to do and dare. The mind appropriates the energy thus evoked and expands it in the effort to attain the thing desired. Let your desires lead ever upward, drawing about you all that is good and beautiful. See that there is purity of heart. Cultivate straightforward thought, an honest thought sent out from the mind with strict honesty of purpose, sustained by a determined will and earnest persistent desire, will create a force that is irresistible. If you will be absolutely true to the highest monitions, true to yourself and to all men, honest, upright, and pure in every thought and act, you will nourish the magic flame that will give peace, power, and self-mastery. Then you can look the whole world in the face with head erect and free, untroubled by remorse or fear. If you will never compromise with deceit or stratagem, if you will stand firm upon the summit of truth with a strong will and unwavering purpose, the forces within will be transmuted into elements of power. Success will attend your undertakings, and your heart will not be vexed with disappointments. Be earnest and purposeful in all you do. Perfect harmonic mental action, straightforward thought, and strong willpower will charge your being with a superabundance of life, and you will diffuse about you a glow of deep and abiding sincerity which others will recognize and emulate. As you gain control over the thoughts and feelings of your own mind and heart, you will gain strength to influence other minds and to inspire those you meet in daily life with a confidence which will cause them to trust you implicitly in all you do and say. Banish from your life all that is disagreeable or demoralizing. Encourage your mind to dwell on thoughts that are hopeful and helpful. Recall every noble deed you have witnessed and every pleasant experience that has come to you. To do this repeatedly will cause your feelings to change. Your mind will open to finer impressions. Your faith in humanity will grow. The inner consciousness of advancement will prompt you to greater effort. You will be fearless in regard to the opinion of others. You will be impervious to reproach and insensible to flattery. If there are times when you become depressed and discouraged, search for the cause and you will find that the enemy has entered by way of uncontrolled thought or foolish fancies. 
Having discovered the cause, sum up your possibilities and invoke the aid of the hidden forces at your command. Then press on with renewed determination, supported by the thought that thousands of hearts are beating in unison with your own, that thousands of purposeful minds are pressing on against the same opposing influences which are met by you, and every victory you achieve will influence others who will become the stronger for your endeavor. Cultivate true desire and perfect self-control. The highest desire awakens in the heart the purest love, the love which recognizes the vital relationship existing between nature and every human being. With the awakening of this love, unsuspected powers will be developed. You will gather to yourself new vigor, magnetism, and force. Learn to control every impulse, passion, and desire which spring up in the changeful heart. Maintain the attitude of the master. Be sincere, noble, and upright, and have faith in your power to overcome all obstacles which are to be met in the upward march to success. Let your zeal be broad and deep. When the opportunity comes for action, let your efforts be well directed and with a force that conquers recognizing the beauty of the higher life. Resolve to make each day's record better than that of the preceding one, to make each hour's effort a stepping stone by which you will rise to better things. Let your thoughts and desires ever soar upward. Let no mistrust of your powers cause you to hesitate, for the worthy exercise of the gifts you already recognize will bring you to a knowledge of others still more to be prized. The fulfillment of your highest aspirations is possible if you will control and make the best use of the forces within. Have no fear of placing before yourself impossible ideals. But in thinking of the goal you are to reach in the future, do not lose sight of the present. The one who looks to the future, unmindful of the present, may lose the opportunities of today and the possibilities of tomorrow. No promise of good to be done or of triumph to be achieved in the future can compensate for the neglect of the present. All powerful people are known to be magnetic, and the possession of this power is considered by many as being a special gift which only a chosen few may enjoy. Yet this power, in common with all gifts of nature, may be possessed by all. Personal magnetism is the most subtle element of the human organism. It is the fire which warms and invigorates man and which gives him the power to influence others. This power will come in greater measure to the one who places himself in a harmonious attitude with nature and closely observes her laws. He will be as the commander who places himself at the head of unnumbered legions. His sense of power will make him dauntless and invincible. His evenness of balance, mastery of self, and sure control of others will make him lavish of the life he feels throbbing in every pulse. As he gives, he receives in return from nature's storehouse. He breathes the infinite life, which is transmuted into currents of magnetic force with which he moves men at will. Open your heart and mind to the inflow of the magnetic life. Let this be your silent demand. O power supreme, make me a worthy part of the universal life. Let me be pure in thought and motive. Fill me with the sacred fire that will enable me to win others to truth and purity. Let my thoughts be of goodness. Let my deeds bring happiness. Magnetism is the life of the world. Electricity is motion without life. Magnetism is life without motion. Union of the two results in the manifestation of celestial harmonies. These, in a way, are the manifestation of the same force. They are dual. Electricity and magnetism, uniting in the physical organism, are constantly generating the vital force, or human fire. To arouse these energies of your being and to wisely direct them, is to have opened unto you the gates of the realized ideal. Magnetism is the king. Electricity is the servant. We can say to electricity, 
you shall run our cars, illuminate the cities by night, and carry news from continent to continent by the lightning's flash. But we cannot say that to magnetism. It will not be ordered. We must draw it and supplicate it. We draw it by thought and love. Magnetism is produced and increased by silent meditation. Magnetism gives power to infuse new life and build new purpose. Who has not grasped the hand of a magnetic person and felt the magic influence that the touch inspires or has been thrilled by the searching gaze of the magnetic eye? Magnetism is the key which unlocks the storehouse of nature and gives free access to an ever-present and ceaseless supply of power for all the purposes and demands of life. To absorb an abundance of this force will give brilliancy to the eyes, color to the lips and cheeks, and great vitality. There are many people who work incessantly, yet their efforts are barren of results. They work without understanding. They are under the delusion that nothing can be achieved except by bodily activity. They have not learned the value of forethought. They rush blindly about, striking a blow here and one there, until physically exhausted. Then they sit down and wail at the cruelty of fate. And in moments of retrospection they see what might have been done if they had only known. But the awakening comes too late. Their ways of working without a knowledge and proper use of their magnetic forces may be compared to one who might cross the continent on foot instead of taking the train. Thus they continue to struggle with adverse conditions, in perpetual conflict with the world and with themselves, all because they depend upon externalities and deal with effects while ignorant of causes. While bodily activity is essential in all mechanical pursuits, yet when the physical organism is made plastic and responsive to the will, every movement may be made with a rhythm that will increase the magnetic energy so that all necessary mechanical labor can be performed without any discordant motions. It is working while out of tune with the higher self that destroys the nervous energy and causes exhaustion. No movement of any voluntary muscle of the body should be made unless directed by the will. Every idle thought should be banished from the mind. The indwelling magnetic will should have absolute control of the mind and body, and in place of disobedience and confusion, there should be established rule and order. You should consciously recognize the divinity of every heartbeat should feel that every respiration is the in-breathing and out-breathing of the life that pervades the universe. You should feel and know that from the food you eat and the water you drink, the wise chemist of the body is appropriating and transmuting the proper elements for the renewing and rebuilding of the physical organism in form and quality corresponding to your highest ideal of symmetry and beauty. The man who can master the magnetic force and learn how to use it may achieve everything that he desires. In order to do this, he must have an indomitable will, must persistently think of and yearn for the object desired, and must project the magnetic suggestions of attraction toward the object or wish. To invoke the power desired and to direct the magnetic currents by the will, it is necessary to establish perfect physical repose, to silence the mind's activity and hold yourself receptive to the impressions that come from within. Clothe the images of your subjective thought with the finest essence of your being and send them out from the inmost center of consciousness with a living power that nothing can check or hinder. To be able to accomplish this, you must have fixedness of purpose. Every thought, aspiration, desire, and attachment must be so thoroughly centered on the ideal you wish to attain and nothing external can affect you. No obstacle should discourage and no experience of the outer man or outer world should have power to swerve you from the ascending path that leads to truth. End of chapter 5. Stay here with me. Let's flip the page to chapter 6. Mental Control Imagination is the eye of the mind. It should be trained to image only the highest. 
A disordered imagination will confuse the mind and dissipate the energies. But when controlled by the will, you can direct it to see yourself in better environments. And the more you do this in imagination, the greater will be your power to make the picture a reality. Live over in mind the acts you should perform, the words you should utter, and the attitude you should assume to take hold of the world and win from it the things you demand. Was not the world made for you? Who has a greater right than you to enjoy the beauties of nature and art, to have the glow and symmetry of health, and to possess the treasures which the earth contains and the sea hides? The world is your estate. It is yours by the divine right of universal humanity. Recognizing this fact, train your imagination to see yourself surrounded by every luxury. See yourself with others who are bright and prosperous. Imagine that you are courageous, that you are gifted, that you have tact and that you have irresistible power. The things you hold most in thought and imagination, you will make a reality. But there must be steadfastness of purpose and persistent faith and effort. To say to yourself daily, I can and I will. To send an unbroken current of thought in the direction of the desire. To aim well and to neglect nothing that will aid you will ensure the final realization of every reasonable ambition. But if you have courage today and make spasmodic efforts and the next day feel depressed and are doubtful, you will send out destructive forces which will hinder your progress. Negative, despondent, irritable thoughts are as potent to destroy as are positive, hopeful, courageous thoughts to build up. If your mind wanders, if you doubt and hesitate, if you lack faith and persistency of purpose, you will continue to drift with the tide of circumstances discouraged and helpless on life's surging sea. The great starting point to freedom and power is the conservation of force. Force is omnipresent. The most important problem is not how to get force, but how to conserve, arouse, and wisely direct the force already at command. The physical organism is like an engine, and the mind is the engineer. If the boiler is full of holes, the force will be dissipated and the machine cannot do effective work. You must stop the leakage, the useless waste by dissipation, and the worry of discontent arising from a distorted imagination. You must cultivate more constructive thought and put vital force into all your actions. You must learn to concentrate the mind to the consideration of a single thing at any given time to the exclusion of all else. And everything you do should be a stepping stone to some fruitful end. The mind must become steadfast and unwavering, and your thoughts creative, expressing the highest and best within. Only as you have health and happiness and use the force of body and faculties of mind aright can you rise to the threshold of the perfect way. You are, by the attitude of thought, you hold always drawing to you corresponding conditions which are beneficial or injurious. There is a mental state which, if permanently held to, will draw to you all that is desirable. If you are always calm and determined and have an unwavering purpose, you will attract to you from the invisible domain the things you silently demand. But if you lack faith and are haunted by fear and uncertainty, you will drive happiness from you and will attract misfortune and failure. Whatever you think you actually make a reality in the realm of mind. If you hold the same thought through days and months and years, you give the idea tangible form. If you keep the idea of success in your mind and dwell on thoughts whose aim is good, you set in motion the attractive force which goes out in the unseen and influences material agencies to serve you. And the longer your mental forces are fixed on the bright and beautiful, on success and happiness, the more power you will have to draw health and prosperity to you. To fix your mind persistently on some definite purpose, to resolve that nothing shall interfere, that you will have the thing desired, maintaining the mood of calm, patient determination, you will grow in possibilities not yet dreamed of. 
Every thought of yours is a force which is building for the future. If at the present moment you are obliged to live amid discordant environments, to associate with uncongenial people, do not feel that you will be forced to continue such relationship. You are there now because the associations are kindred to past thoughts and desires. The mood of mind you are most in now will determine your future for good or ill. If you cultivate cheerfulness, are full of hope and ambition, and are living in imagination in better surroundings among superior people, you will develop forces which will carry you forward to higher truth and possibility. You absorb the thought and take on the characteristics of those with whom you are most associated. If their mind is on a lower plane of thought, if they are coarse and materialistic, they fetter your aspiration and deaden the finer sensibilities. You have latent in you some special capacity different from that possessed by any other person. To discover your talents and set diligently to work to develop them, to allow no influence to check you, no barrier to discourage, you will grow into ever-increasing possibilities of strength and usefulness. It is your rightful heritage to be permanently free from all disease, all weakness, and the slavery of fear, and to live in close relationship with the infinite mind from which you may draw life, strength, and inspiration sufficient for all demands. You should spend a short time each day in the practice of mental and physical drills and deep breathing. Cheerfulness is conducive to health, while sadness and anxiety produce disease. Constant direction of the thoughts to any part of the body will alter the circulation of the blood in that part. It is impossible to be strong and vigorous while all the time sending through the body negative, unhealthy thoughts. To become magnetic and strong, you must send positive thought currents through the body and have in your mind high and noble ideals. As the organ of thought is perpetually changing in cell structure, to hold a number of bright pictures in the mind and to repeat the process daily, the images which at first are indistinct will become vivid. Impulses and desires which at first are vague will become more definite and the dreams of today will become the realities of tomorrow. In your silent sitting, flash the searchlight of concentrated thought through the hidden recesses of the nerves. Breathe deep and slow with longer exhalations in point of time than inhalations. Send all thought and feeling to a center in the breast. Pass from the breast to the solar plexus, then to the feet. Concentrate about one minute in each function. Now direct the thought currents from the feet steadily upward to the base of the spine then along the spine to the base of the brain. Keep the vibratory waves uniform and try to make the current harmonize with the vibratory rates of the different functions. If there is excessive action of any of the vital centers, contract the parts and reduce the vibrations by suggesting the counteractive thought of cold, icy, death-like quiet. If there is lack of power in any function, increase the vibrations by directing a stimulating fiery current to the weakened parts until they glow with intensity. At first you will find it difficult to concentrate the life forces and hold the thoughts steadily where directed, but patience and perseverance will give encouraging results. Understanding the laws of the human mind you will be able to consciously direct your thoughts by the will to any part of the body and by sending forceful suggestion of health and power you may acquire a vitality which will protect you from the ravages of disease and enable you to rise above the adverse influences of environment as month by month you drill yourself in these things you will discover that thought is not confined to the brain but that it traverses the nerves and penetrates every part of the body. You will also learn that it is not confined to the body, but that it may be sent in vibratory waves through the inner ether to the most distant parts of the world. End of chapter six. All right, my dear one, if you haven't done so, hit that like button 
Leave me a comment. What was your takeaway on this chapter? And let's head over to the next video where we're going to learn about the law of suggestion.